Master, the skeletal crows have pointed out the arcane college's location. It's just ahead. <laughs> very good, very good. And now, my dear Marishka, stay clear of our giant boy's swings, lest you be swatted, much like those heroes will be. <laughs> Understood, master. Welcome to MJ Hobby Corner, everyone. This is game number eight uh, for Death Wizards, The Adventures of Rottergast. Here is Rottergast himself and all of his undead minions. Uh, this is a game by Snarling Badger Studios. Uh, and this is scenario number five from the book, Steal, an Ar Steal from an Arcane College. Uh, and of course, I add a little bit of my own terrain uh, to enhance things a little bit but basically uh, we have the pools we have the arcane college we have another pool here and then the rest of the terrain I simply roll up on a table uh, with a little building here some forest and then my own kind of scattered terrain to uh, enhance the board a little bit all right so this is the board I'll be playing on and everything here is uh, scratch built, uh, with the exception of the miniatures. So if you want to help support the channel, check out Scratch Builder Monthly or our Patreon. You can visit our Patreon uh, for uh, extra videos and also for uh, the magazine Scratch Builder Monthly. All right, so let's get on to turn one. First things first, Rottergast is deployed right here. We see Rottergast. We see Marishka, the vampire spawn. We see uh, Archer Skelly. We see a zombie. We see Giant Skelly, who is rating three. We see Death Knight, Lucian the Death Knight. And we see Cousin with his bladed book. Uh, Cousin is a, a really interesting little character. All right, and for the heroes, we have two wizards. We have two warriors and one villager which represents the Arcane College Groundskeeper. Now, I actually increased the uh, heroes uh, to 11 rating. So we these are actually uh, rating three wizards. So they're gonna be tough. Uh, rating three wizards each. So about 11 rating for the heroes and 11 rating for uh, Rottergast and his minions. So I have a lot of rating one undead, so that's why I have more figures. All right, so that's just a note on the rating. All right, so I always like to work out the activation order before the game because I get confused very easily. Uh, Rottergast will be activating a total of about three times uh, every turn, and of course, that's going to change. Uh, throughout the game as hero as figures die uh, heroes have their own order of activation uh, the rules list which heroes activate first um, depending on you know what's on the board so in this case the wizards will go first followed by the warriors and then uh, finally the villager but as I said this will change throughout the game the other thing I want to say is I keep my battle reports uh, short. Um, standard reports uh, right now are about 30 to 35 minutes, even 40 minutes if it's a complex game. Uh, but 30 to 35 minutes is the standard. And then uh, anywhere from 8 to 15 minutes is a battlefield snapshot. So uh, the point is I don't show every single turn or roll in a game, but I will have... Uh, something uh, to indicate to the viewer where we are in the turn, especially in a game like this where, you know, turns have specific orders of activation. This first turn, Rottergast moves five inches around the big boy and stays around there in front of Archer Skelly. Uh, he does not cast a spell this turn. 
The giant skeleton, which is rating three, moves forward with his giant gait uh, just about here. Um, he moves a total of eight inches and he towers over the uh, rock walls there. Okay, so Skelly has moved forward. He's rating three. I can move one more rating of undead. And I think uh, I'm going to move the archer. And the archer moves six inches pretty fast for Skelly. So he's going to move forward to try to get a shooting position on the incoming heroes. Fortunately, because we are playing in advanced mode, uh, this means that anytime an undead a minion moves, uh, we roll a d6, and on a four or over, um, they take 1d3 damage. So let's see. So first, the giant skeleton. No, he takes no damage from the magical traps. There are magical traps all over that board. So let's see. Um, no. Okay. So Archer Skelly and Giant Skelly are fine for now. So there is no enemy yet within the uh, within six inches of the wizard, so they won't teleport away. So now I just roll a D10 and then two uh, fiery bolts. The wizard will attack the nearest three enemies it can see. If there are four, then three enemies within range, it will move up to six inches and make this attack. Okay. Okay, and if not, uh, it can do a double move towards the nearest enemy. Well, let's see now. We have Giant here. He's obviously in line of sight. So the wizard moves six inches uh, in order to get the best line of sight possible to attack three enemies. She could definitely see the Giant. She sees Archer and Rottergast. And now she attacks all three. Now she is within 20 inch range of all three figures. So first is gonna be the bone giant. Uh, so let's see, she has often six. Yikes, six dice. And now my Skelly's defense is eight. So she needs eight. He is also nothing but bones. So there will be a minus one to this since it is an offensive attack. Okay, so eight uh, looks like we have one hit, and that's it. One hit, that's it. So, minus one damage because he's nothing but bones, so he is not damaged. Now, we're going to go to Rottergast. She needs sixes. Oh, she got a crit right there. That counts as two hits, so three hits. All right, let's see what Rottergast does. Rottergast suddenly puts up a shield at the hurling of fireball, and as it comes, it smacks into the shield, and he avoids the damage. Now, this costs one energy, so I have to reduce my energy cost by one. So Archer Skelly is going to uh, get attacked. And again, uh, we have six dice by this wizard. He's only uh, defense three. Yikes. Okay, so please. Oh, wow. A total of five hits on Archer Skelly as the fireball slams into him. Now he is nothing but bones, so I'm going to remove one hit. Uh, that still gives him four damage. The next wizard rolls a seven on her AI, and she is within the 20 inch range against the big guy here. So she launches a full fledged fireball, which only attacks one enemy, and it attacks that enemy's resist, not like the previous one that uses defense. So this is the Skelly's resist. His resist is only a four. Okay, so uh, same amount of dice, this time needing four. So, oh no! Does four, five, six, seven uh, durability damage. Uh, because this is his resist, he does not get the minus one 
uh, benefit from nothing but bones. And it smashes into him. And he goes down from 16 to 9 durability. All in one turn. Yikes. All right. Now back to Rottergast. Now Rottergast moves. He's activated. This is his second activation. He moves right behind a Skelly. Now he activated. So his uh, necromantic aura of repair comes into play um, and he's going to do attempt D3 healing on the Skelly uh, just for activating. This triggers anytime he activates. So D3. Okay, three points back to the giant skeleton. All right. Sorry, Archer, but Big Skelly is... I have plans for him, so we don't want him to die this quickly. Okay, three points back, uh, brings him up to 12. He's still wounded, but that's okay. It's better than nine. All right, and now that Rodergas has activated with movement, he still has a power that he can use, so he is going to target two figures within line of sight and use his unique necromantic power remove from harm and now this is a power so this is the only thing that he can do um so i think he's going to teleport zombie within uh 12 inches in line of sight so he's gonna put zombie right up against this wall since zombie is very slow put him up in the front lines and then he gazes over to Death Knight and pushes Death Knight forward as well, right behind Zombie. This why uh, teleporting those two figures and putting them in the front line ready to go at those heroes as they come. Okay, the turn is now over and uh, Death Knight and Zombie use their uh, actual activations to move a little bit forward. Uh, we have Rottergast right here, uh, keeping close to the giant. He activated his repair ability again and did another three points of healing on the giant, which uh, brings him up to 15 durability. So that's good. Giant's pretty good. Marishka goes right up to the wall here, looking for her opportunity. And we have Cousin right next to Archer, inching forward towards the heroes. Now, uh, one of the hero uh, wizards, which is right here, uh, she fired the fireball, but then we had the warriors. One of them uh, did a double move because his condition didn't quite fit. So he did a double move instead. And then one warrior uh, took a defensive stance. That was the result of his AI. And so he has plus one defense. And the villager rush, uh, rushed forward nervously right next to the wizard but he eyes that giant skeleton very very nervously so maybe he'll run away who knows forgot to report the damages from the magical traps uh marishka took no damage she rolled a one so she didn't roll a four plus cousin took three points of damage having rolling a five and then the d3 was also a five he took three points of damage and the zombie took three points of damage so zombie uh, only has only has seven durability left and uh, cousin Skelly has six durability left so we're gonna have to try and see if uh, Rottergas can come down and use his aura of repair uh, so yeah those magical traps are a pain in the butt Okay, so uh, Rottergast energy goes up back up to 18 uh, as he can't go higher than that. Normally he recharges 3 energy every turn. Um, he is <clears throat> going to activate in his first activation. And I think we're going to have to be really careful about this because of the magical trap damage that is possible. So he's going to activate right near Marishka. And uh, he is going to attempt to heal uh, his little cousin. And let's see if he does so. How much points? How many points? Four. Okay, so two points. So cousin gains two points from 
earlier from that damage he suffered earlier. Okay, so that was his aura of repair. And you know, I think he's going to cast Bolster Undead. All right, well, he's going to give it to Archer Skelly. We'll give it to Archer Skelly. And he's going to get the full Bolster Undead. So plus two defense, plus two offense. And uh, that will then bring down his energy. Go down to 14. Okay, so now he's down to 14 energy. Boaster Undead on Archer Skelly. And now his four rating of Undead. So, <clears throat> I think the uh, he moves eight inches. So our big skeleton, our giant skeleton is going to come over and attempt to swipe that warrior now let's see the wizard is within three inches she is within three inches and not the villager so the wizard will take half damage if he hits the warrior okay and the skelly has seven attack dice he is often seven the warrior has defense six so he needs sixes let's see what he does come on Oh, not the greatest, not the greatest. So the warrior takes two damage and the dark elf wizard takes one damage because she is within three inches and that's because of his sweeping strikes. Magical trap for the bone skelly. Four, yes. So D3. One point of damage for skelly. All right, uh, so that's a rating three. Now I can activate a rating one. So I guess I'm gonna do zombie since he is rating one and that will complete my four rating for this turn. Now zombie's very slow, but he is within distance of this guy right here. So zombie moves in for the attack. And let's see. And Zombie is uh, rating 3. He does have Rotting End as a special ability. But that only kicks in when he's at durability 0. So he rolls. He needs 6s. Nice. Alright. 2 hits. 2 more hits on the Warrior. He takes 2 more damage. Does Zombie take damage? No. He does not take damage from activating. Woohoo. The first wizard rolls on her AI for a total of seven, which means fireball. Oh man, another fireball attack by the dark elf wizard. Uh, she attacks the nearest enemy it can see, targeting that enemy's resist. Okay, so she's gonna attack. She could either attack, zombie's actually closer right here, so she's gonna attack zombie. All right, a fireball forms in the air in front of her as she says the magic words uh oh offense of six zombies only defense three. Oh boy so here we go yikes only one miss holy crap so that is two three four five damage on zombie now he was let's see zombie was durability seven because of previous damage that was because of the magical trap. So now he has two durability left as the fireball smacks into him. I want to make a quick correction because in my excitement, I get all excited. Um, we actually removed these two because it targets the resist and zombie does not have resist three. He has resist four. Okay, so it's actually four damage. I'm gonna correct that uh, now, but it's still a pretty good hit. Our friendly neighborhood wizard uh, defaults to Force Globe uh, as she could not fulfill the other conditions. Uh, and Force Globe, uh, she basically just moved a full move, staying uh, away from all enemies, at least by an inch. And uh, she increases her defense by one. Wizards have resist of nine, so this is a, a power roll. Oh, good. 
Look at that. Um, two, uh, here is a, a 10, a 9. Uh, it looks like two successes only. Yeah, two successes. 1d10 damage. Doing six points of damage to the Dark Wizard. And that ends uh, Rottergast's second activation. And Rottergast's energy goes down to 11 from 14 to 11 after doing that spell. And we move on with turn two. So I think Death Knight is going to activate and he moves his five inches. And he's going to support the zombie and the giant skelly. And he's going to attack that poor warrior. Ha! He's not a poor warrior. He's a bully. All right. So Death Knight with his massive nine dice offensive attacks the warrior. Lucy and the Death Knight need sixes. Oh, very nice. Okay. So Lucy and the Death Knight's crits, thanks to cruel blades, are three instead of double. So three, four, five, six, seven. In addition, the target gets weakened, uh, and warriors are not immune to weakened, as far as I can see. Uh, that's the priest, I guess. Um, so warriors, uh, he will take the full seven damage. And let me see. He is the spearman, so from 12 minus seven, giving him five durability left. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, uh, knight, the warrior gets the weakened condition. Activate. All right, he does take damage. All right, okay, and the target has to die for Death Knight to be able to use his healing ability. He did not, and so uh, Death Knight takes three damage from the magical traps. Yikes. Before I go on to the warrior's turn, and I'm going to summarize the rest of this uh, actual turn, but basically, uh, one thing I noted is that that wizard when a zombie moved in uh she was four inches uh away from him so on her turn she would have moved in uh 12 inches away from the zombie it's called walk the mist uh that's just an ability that i have to remember i always forget that for the wizards and it happens before any activation so i just wanted to mention that okay so rodergast third Activation has just ended, so this turn's about to end. Uh, we see Rottergast here use this healing aura to bring back a little bit of healing to the uh, giant here who suffered a whopping amount of damage from that warrior. That warrior did a double strike on the giant, and he took uh, quite a bit of damage. He is now uh, down to four. But because Rottergast activated his healing ability, he is uh, up to six. Okay. Now, uh, Death Knight did uh, move. He activated. We already saw the results of Magical Trap for him. So, uh, another thing I want to make sure that I mention is that Wizards, and this is something I also forget, they have Magical Shielding. So, the first time that they are attacked, uh, magical shielding uh, gains a plus three bonus to defense for the first offensive attack. So every time one of my minions attacks them for the first time in the turn, uh, they get a plus three defense. So that makes a big difference. So what I did is because this wizard suffered most of her damage from a power attack, not an offensive attack, I gave her one durability. So she is up from four to five and that's to cover the one damage that she took uh, from before it was a very like simple uh, offensive damage so I just gave her one more to kind of correct for that of course she took most of the damage from a spell which is not covered by shielding all right so she is up to five however Archer Skelly on his turn on his activation uh, fired an arrow and hit her for one point of damage. Uh, Marishka was uh, teleported here by Rottergast during his turn. And then Cousin just inched forward his six inch move. So uh, now it's going to be, I have one more rating of undead that I can activate. And that's going to be Marishka because she was catapulted by Rottergast's special necromantic ability. 
Okay, so she's going to attack next. Marishka needs seven. Uh, she attacks with, what is it, five? Yes. Okay, so let's see. Blood Frenzy, if this model rolls two plus crits on any attack, there are no two plus crits here. Uh, but she does some damage, defense seven, so that's two, three, looks like three damage. Okay, so the turn has now ended, we're going to turn three. However, we have uh, the villager who attacked Death Knight, did not do a thing, rolled very low, and Death Knight has a defense of nine. So the villager got a little bit of uh, fury in him, uh, charged Death Knight, did no damage. Oh, and by the way, that warrior rolled a one on his AI, so he's actually just in a defensive stance not wanting to move anywhere and there's the second wizard who uh did the force globe the turn begins with 11 energy as rottergast recharges this is a pivotal turn no heroes have been downed and time is running out for rottergast Rottergast begins his activation by making a mental calculation of the distance to the farthest warrior. He can see the warrior and says dark words for a negative bolt spell to appear. I roll the power dice needing fives to beat the warrior's resist. The result is one success. The spell hits doing seven damage. See that again. John Skelly then takes his activation and moves away from the battle in the middle of the board. He begins over six inches away from the wizard, so she does not misty walk. However, she gets a plus three defense bonus with shielding if he attacks. The giant swings and misses the high defense of ten. Magical traps trigger, and then the giant skelly takes two damage. Zombie then reacts and attacks. He does one damage and takes no damage himself from magical traps. The wizard then moves out of the combat and shoots three fiery bolts at three targets. Marishka takes some damage uh, from the spell as the fiery bolt hits her she takes five damage. Next, the wizard spins and shoots at our hero, Rottergas. But he is too quick, spends one energy, and puts up a magic barrier. She would have done five damage to him otherwise. Finally, Lucian, the Death Knight, is the final target of this attack, but his armor protects him and the spell does no damage. He has a defense of 9, so the wizard missed that one. Now the second wizard uses Force Globe and moves away from the tire, towering giant skeleton. Marauder spends 3 energy, casts Boaster Undead on Marishka and Death Knight. So they each get plus 1 defense, plus 1 offense. Then Marauder moves... Uh, behind Marishka, trusting that Marishka and Lucian can handle the opponents. Rottergast then heals, uh, by activating his healing aura, heals the uh, giant skelly by two, bringing him back up to six durability. So now, uh, with that plus one offense and defense, Marishka moves into combat with the wizard, uh, slightly boosted. Mariska needs to beat a defensive seven. Okay, so it looks like three damage. Third, only having one durability left is taken out by Mariska. She feeds. Magical blood tastes like victory. <laughs> Good, Mariska. Good. Feed and replenish. Wizard was rating three, and so Rottergas uh, goes up to six energy as he absorbs the wizard's uh, life force. 
Archer Skelly uh, took magical damage, three points of magical damage, and that was enough to down him. He is out of the game. Sorry, Archer Skelly. We'll try to bring you back. Uh, this warrior uh, just uh, did defensive stance, so he has plus one defense, plus one offense. Cousin has moved into combat with him and uh, actually did some damage, and the warrior now has one durability left. Cousin did one damage to him. Very good cousin. Okay. Um, and now, uh, let's see. Also, Marishka took damage from the other warrior who, uh, despite her buffs, did two damage. And there's the warrior's roll, a nine and an eight. So despite her uh, buff buffed up defense, he did two damage. She now has two durability left. She's dangerously low. And so now this is Rottergast's uh, final activation, and he's just going to fire a bolt, reducing his energy from 6 to 3. And let's see if he can do some damage to that warrior. All right, so we have two successes, because I don't do crits on, on powers. Uh, two successes. And he does 4 damage. And that warrior, that's enough to wipe him out. He only had one durability. Fight attacks, needing five. And, oh man, what a terrible roll. All right, so that is the uh, spear warrior. He only has two durability left. So, uh, yep, he does enough damage to kill the warrior. And now, uh, Death Knight can heal ability uh, near full he has 19 so a uh, good job Lucian magical trap for Lucian no magical trap for Lucian he's good and we have a zombie that's nearly dead um, nearly destroyed but there it is Lucian pulls comes through and destroys a warrior we now have a chance we have a chance there's only two uh, uh, heroes on the table, the villager and the wizard. So turn three is over and the hero has fleed. He rolled a one on his AI, so he flees uh, Death Knight here. And uh, yeah. Four begins with uh, eight energy as uh, Rodergast uh, increases his energy from five to eight. And now... Let's see. I'm going to summarize a little bit of this turn as well. Let's see if this is the last turn. During his first activation, Rodergast moves and then casts Grasping Tendrils. Uh, he spends four energy, so he is down to four energy this turn. Then he rolls his three power dice for success. And she has a resist of, uh, it's very high, a nine. Um... So 9 resist and okay 1d3 damage so she's going to take a little bit of damage. Uh, that's good. And she takes 3 damage. Alright, Marishka healed 1 thanks to Rodergast's healing ability when he activated. The giant who is rating 3 moves in to attack the villager with his giant uh, sweeps. And uh, he is offense 7. Uh, the villager's only uh, defense three. And he rolls a, a two crits. Oh, let's see if the villager's destroyed. That's four, uh, five, six, seven, eight damage. And the villager only has eight durability. The villager's destroyed, uh, crushed by the giants. Uh, club, which is actually a big tombstone. <laughs> All right, one hero left, and we still have turn five. I think we can do this. Knight, uh, Bone Giant triggers magical traps. He does get hit, and now D3 damage. All right, one point of damage to the Bone Giant. Ishka then moves to the Grasp Wizard. She attacks. Uh, this time her offense is not boosted, and she does two damage, uh, bringing the wizard down to, uh, let's see, that is four durability. 
Ashka does trigger magical traps, but she is unharmed. Second activation, teleport zombie and death knight as close as he can to the wizard. He then moves himself closer to Mariska. He makes an attack with only two durability and needing sevens. And he does one damage, but he also takes some damage himself. Yes, he is hit by the magical traps. And that's two damage. That is all he had. So Zombie sacrifices himself, but does a point of damage to the wizard, bringing her down to three durability. And now Rodergast's final activation. He attacks the wizard with his staff. Let's see, he is Offense 5, Wizards Defense 7. He does a crit and one damage. So that is three damage. The Wizard only had three durability and she is out of the picture and destroyed. All heroes destroyed by the close to the end. I did have quite a few minions destroyed. Only uh, three minions left on the table. Marishka. Uh, cousin, Death Knight, Lucian, Death Knight, and the Giant, the Bone Giant. Well, four, four minions. All right, not bad. Well done, children. Now, let's go back to the lair. I have some resurrecting to do. First, we're going to try to restore Archer Skelly. I uh, roll a D10 and get a plus one because of a crypt. That is one of the impedimenta I have in my layer. Uh, he gets a six, plus one is seven. So the model is recovered without change. Okay, so he is good. Now that's it. I can only give the bonus to one minion. So now we're rolling for zombie. And he rolls a six, so he is good. Okay, so both minions, uh, despite their damage, come back without a problem. Okay, now let's try to raise a new dead. Uh, this is going to be a flesh golem, um, and let's see, I, this is the first time I'm trying to raise a flesh golem, so no bonus, he is rating 4, so I need over, a f I need a 5 or a 6, alright, let's see, no, okay, next time I'll get a plus 1, so we are going to keep trying uh, to get this flesh golem into the crew, right. You're a difficult one. Cousin! Cousin! Go get your little empty skull into the library. Find me a new enchantment. Okay, so we're not raising heroes. Uh, we're not retiring uh, minions. So we go on to the impedimenta. And basically because I won this game on advanced... I get the choice of an alchemical library, a research laboratory, or a scrying pool for my lair. I'm going to add a scrying pool. So uh, just to remind you, my lair is now a dungeon. It has a crypt, an armory, a library, and now a scrying pool. So very, very cool. All right. Well, that's the end of the game, folks. Uh, our bone giant was really cool. I really like that guy. Uh, those magical traps in the advanced game, yeah, if you want to be challenged, definitely do the advanced game. Um, while the heroes were defeated, uh, the wizards were actually, I felt them a lot tougher, and that's because I remembered a lot of their special abilities. In other games, I just forgot, you know, they, it's just a lot of little things to remember. But they were pretty tough, and they were also rating three, which makes them a little tougher. Uh, with their resist especially so the wizards are definitely a tough one and then trying to lock in the warriors uh, th there was a couple of times I forgot repulsed uh, when you roll a one you you take damage for every one you roll uh, so zombie could have been taken out I think before uh, he was taken out with the magic traps but you know it is what it is otherwise a very fun game uh, the final adventures of Rottergast will be played for Halloween, okay? And then I'm going to take a break and maybe roll up another character. Uh, we've I've played a, a lot of uh, Adventures of Rottergast. We've done this consistently. 
uh, throughout the channel. So I'm going to play until Halloween. And Halloween, that week of Halloween, we're going to have three different games. We're going to have uh, Verit Wood. We're going to have uh, Death Wizards, and we're going to have Rain and Hell. And I will put a poll so you guys can vote which one you want to see first, all right? So uh, I definitely want to do some stuff with Verit Wood and Rain and Hell. All right, folks, thank you very much, and I'll see you in the next video. I'm going to go take a break and then paint the rest of the day.